Hi and welcome back to Doc Off Call. My name is Maddie and I'm a doctor working in the UK. In today's video we're going to be talking about the topic of insomnia and we're going to be doing this using the anime Gintama. So if you like videos like this, why not check out this video where I break down sleep paralysis with a bit of help from Gintama. Otherwise, please do give us a like and consider subscribing down below so that you don't miss out on any more videos like this. So let's take a look. So insomnia is one of the most common, if not the commonest, sleep disorder out there, and almost anything can cause an occasional restless night, from a snoring partner to being in a bit of pain, or a bit of emotional distress if you're worrying about something. Let's find out what's causing Kagura's lack of sleep. So in her desperation in this scene, she's gone to wake up Kintama to try and help her get back to sleep. And I can really empathise with this. I used to suffer from terrible insomnia when I was a lot younger. And uh, I always felt like I was the only one awake in the world. And you feel really isolated. Um, now, what really reassured me and ended up helping me get off back to sleep was knowing and recognising other people might be awake. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't recommend doing this to anyone who was trying to get to sleep. Uh, incredibly annoying. Um, but what it does remind me of is another sleep condition that some people can uh, struggle with that can make insomnia even worse, and that's restless leg syndrome. Now, I've had many a night where I've had uh, uh, restless legs, and it's intolerable. It can keep you up for hours on end, and that's what this reminds me of. <laughs> So this does raise another important factor that can be related to insomnia, and that's the bedroom environment. Now the bedroom, bedroom environment should be as relaxing as possible, and researchers have shown that there's a strong association in people's mind between sleep and their bedroom environment. And they found that certain things can weaken that association. These things include TVs and other electronic gadgets, light, noise, and a bad mattress or bed. Your bedroom ideally needs to be dark, quiet, tidy, and be kept at a temperature between 18 to 24 degrees. So if you're wanting to create this environment, it might be worth investing in some thick curtains to make sure the room's dark, and to try to eliminate noise, you might want to invest in either double glazing or a good pair of earbuds. <laughs> and uh, this is clearly depicting an overactive brain um, where she's obviously thinking too much about everything that's going on. And this is commonly found in insomniacs or people that suffer from sleep problems long term. They often actually feel anxious or stressed about sleep rather than feeling relaxed. Now, some people can become so stressed that the brain hijacks the stress response system. And what it does here is it activates your fight and flight response that leads to a release of chemicals throughout the body. Now, these stress chemicals, such as cortisol, work on increasing your blood pressure, your heart rate, your breathing rate, and can cause things like clamminess or sweatiness, much like what we're seeing here with Kagura. 
Now this state is sometimes described as a state of hyperarousal, and in it the brain is constantly hunting for potential threats in your environment, and so you can become very distracted by even the most subtle of noises or stimulus in your environment. あ、ちょっと待って、眠れなくなってきたのか。ああ、ガッシ。いや、アイブ and uh, he's beginning to think about everything consciously where the whole process of sleep is supposed to be a subconscious or unconscious process that you have no control over and clearly his mind is now thinking about those things which I've been there and I don't know if you guys have experienced something like that as well. <laughs> So here he's talking about not knowing what to do with his eyes and of course you're not supposed to know what you're doing with your eyes when you're asleep um, but once you become conscious of it it's quite difficult to ignore that. Now there is a period of sleep where eye movements do become relevant and that is in the deepest part, part of sleep and we refer to this period of sleep as REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep. Um, and typically what goes on during this period is when your eyes are closed they can often be seen oscillating from left to right in the horizontal plane. Now again this isn't a conscious um, decision that you're making it's just part of the brain's processing during sleep. <laughs> Okay, so what should she be doing at this stage? So really, the evidence suggests that you shouldn't stay in bed, alright? The bed should just be associated with sleep and it can do more harm just staying in bed. So the best thing is to do is to get up and uh, do something that's going to tire out the mind and uh, things that I would recommend are things like journaling, reading a book, or meditating. Okay, so she's going to try a bit of exercise. Um, now, whilst exercise is recommended, it's normally recommended that you do more relaxing exercises such as yoga or stretching, um, because what they do is they relax the muscles, getting you ready for sleep. Now, vigorous exercise, on the other hand, does the complete opposite. So it will tense up the muscles, it will lead you to sweat, and it will cause the release of more adrenaline and more of those stress hormones that we spoke about earlier. So vigorous exercise should be a no-no. <laughs> oh, why would, why would you think that is a good idea? And uh, I mean, clearly you can see the effects of the adrenaline on our body. So you can hear her heart rate pounding away, her blood pressure's going up, her breathing rate, her body temperature, and she's now become sweaty. And none of these are going to be conducive to a nice, relaxing night of sleep. Okay, so that's actually a good recommendation. Uh, remembering to take a cool bath and not a hot shower. Um, what this will do is it will help to regulate the body's temperature down to the most ideal and relaxing uh, temperature that will help you sleep. Also, the effect of your body cooling from the bath to the room temperature has a relaxing effect on the muscles, winding your body down for sleep. Okay. <laughs> 
So now she's hungry too, and uh, it's true that after a meal you often feel tired, and this is because eating triggers the parasympathetic nervous system, which directs blood from everywhere else in your body to your gut. And as a result, this leads to a decrease in your blood pressure, your heart rate, um, as well as your body temperature, and it helps to relax the body down for a gentle snooze. But I wouldn't recommend this as a method to help with sleep because you're balancing up a short snooze versus trying to digest the food whilst lying flat, which isn't recommended. <laughs> <laughs> and exactly as I predicted, Kagura's appetite got the better of her, and she's so full that she's unable to fully extend her diaphragm down to breathe, so she's resorted to breathing like this. And as the translation shows, she's breathing like how a pregnant mother would um, just before delivery. So she's effectively got a carb baby in there. <laughs> oh, she is so stupid. So she's now trying to burn off the calories from all that food that she's just eaten. And of course, that's not going to work. It's, it's this level of stupidity within the Gintama um, anime that just makes it so entertaining and fun to watch. Okay, so she's going to try with the radio on, but what other things can help with sleeping? So other relaxation exercises might include reading a book or making a to-do list to help organise your thoughts before you go to bed. Now it's also recommended to avoid using smartphones, tablets or other electronic devices for up to an hour before you sleep because it's been recognised that the light coming from the screen of your device can have a negative impact on your sleep. Now it's likely that when Kagura wakes up she's going to be feeling pretty restless and I don't know about you guys but after waking up from a restless night I've felt pretty exhausted too. Now, the science behind this is that during normal sleep, your brain normally utilizes cerebral glucose. So that's glucose found within the brain. Um, now, in a normal person, during sleep, your metabolic rate slows down so that you actually conserve more of this glucose during the day. However, in insomniacs, where they have high levels of these stress hormones circulating in their body, they actually increase their metabolic rate and thereby use all of that glucose so when they wake up in the morning they can often feel stressed confused and a little bit dazed now when these cycles of restlessness and stress last for several months we can call this chronic insomnia now although people rarely die from insomnia the chemical imbalance um, that's found in this condition is also found in conditions such as anxiety or people having panic attacks or being depressed and so if you're suffering from depression or anxiety it does leave you more susceptible from suffering from insomnia as well and let's have a look to see if uh, listening to the radio did the trick Okay, so she's seemingly gone off to sleep, but uh, it looks like Gintama now is suffering from insomnia and left awake. Now, in addition to some of those practices we discussed earlier, some doctors might prescribe a short course of medications to help with sleeping, and this is only normally done for a short period to help restore your sleep cycle. Now, it's important to mention some of the medications that are used to help restore sleep do have negative effects also, with some of them being highly addictive, with people becoming dependent on them in the future. And lastly, our sleeping and waking cycle is a delicate balance and vital for maintaining both our physical and mental health. For this reason, it's really important to put in some effort to find out about good bedtime routines. But 
don't lose any sleep over it. Okay, so I hope you found today's video useful and entertaining. If you did, please do give us a like and consider subscribing down below. Otherwise, why not come over to my channel and look at a few more videos like this where I break down a few more medical scenes in different anime. But otherwise, leave us any recommendations for any anime you'd like me to break down, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.